Hello, this is a making of of a video on the main channel, so watch that first if you haven't already. It's about Gaussian splitting. Mm -hmm. How I first found out about Gaussian splitting is by visiting this lovely website, Shader Toy, which is an initiative of uh, Inigo Griles. I, of course, I say that wrong. Sorry. He can paint with maths and also created this little animation, which is Gaussian splitting. And that's the first time I saw it. And then quite much later, I found out about post shot on a uh, YouTube. Mm -hmm. And I thought, ah, that's a great way to spice up my shots. I soon started experimenting resulting in some crazy stuff. It's a crazy, I'm sorry. I'm going to show you how I made this horn in its natural habitat animation. It's not how you're supposed to use Gaussian splitting, but I really think it looks really cool. So let's get right into it. All I did was make this video. That's all. And then I imported it in post shot. And for this demonstration, the only thing I change is this. And then I click import. And I will now switch to me talking while doing the screen capture. And I talk really weird for some reason. Right. Almost there. And then, then it will start the split. And there it happens. Now the magic happens. Isn't it amazing? You can see where all the camera shots were made. And there's our scene. Because of the way this was shot, it's difficult to move around the scene. So I'm actually going to pause the training. And I'm also going to save it with storing the training context. So uh, you have these tools to move around and to move the splat and stuff. But that's actually not really convenient. There's in this particular case a better way to do it. Instead you can just go to edit and move it there. And then I enable their, their thingy here. And I can see that I'm now around the middle point. And I also can scale it to say 0.1. Uh, maybe that's a bit too small. <laughs> Where is it going? <laughs> Sorry. Let's do the scaling first. That's a good idea. I am not very technically skilled and also the program is still uh, in the beta testing phase. Actually, I probably... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, this is actually already good. So now I position the camera at around the actual position of one of the cameras and I I can make uh, make a shot. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Maybe I need to be a little wider. No, I think it's about right. You can of course change all that. You can change the focal length. All within the possibilities. But uh, it still looks crap, so let's continue the training by pressing start training. Making an animation is also fairly easy. With the middle mouse you can move around, so uh, let's make it a nice smooth and long animation of 600 frames at 60 frames per second. Yeah, that's because the camera cannot record 60 round that's why i choose that now i'm going to make a camera create camera and then i select the camera here this is the default dimensions we'll change that later let's go to frame 200 move around a little like this oh i need to be a little lower for it to look better another frame and then we're going all crazy now i'm going to move into a direction doesn't that look incredible already? <laughs> that has not been scanned. Because I only scanned from one point of view and that's why this happens. So I make another frame here and let's go to the... Good, I made the animation. 
it's even though I'm making a screen recording, it still plays at more than 60 frames. That's good. So I decided to go all the way around. It's not very smooth, but it's just a demonstration. So pretty amazing, right? Just that, that, that one shot that I made, you can make such a lovely animation. I just really love how this breaks apart. It's awesome. Anyway, um, now I have to export it, of course. So now I change the resolution to 4K. Still plays pretty smooth. That's because it's a fairly simple uh, splat thing. Now I go to output, version one, camera one, and then I add a dash because else the number goes away. And then I make a folder where I'm going to place the file and I'm exported as open EXR. Then I have all the dynamic range and all the freedom to do grading as well as transparency. The problem with that is that the files are rather big. And uh, let's press render. Now, if we look at the hard drive, which is a eight terabyte SSD, as you can see here, it will soon be running at 100% because of the amount of data it has to save. <laughs> it can't keep up with the render speed. Not bad for uh, two, two, three year old GPU, which is also at maximum RAM now. And there we go. Now the render slows down. Mm, it's like rising. Right, I had just enough space left to save that, but now I have to remove something in order to continue. Here we are in Resolve, and as you can see, I already exported some shots to another older SSD. Here is the, uh, are all the files. It's important to uh, Check this here to read them as a sequence because else you'll just get a bunch of pictures. Drag that in here, go to the edit, drag it into the edit and here is our animation. Now I'm going to grade it of course. I'm going to the grade tab and I just use one of my screenshots here, quick and dirty. This one, so grade it. Well, not really, but that's why I recorded it in VLOG and exported as EXR. I have all kinds of vignetting going on even. Let's disable that for now. Let's make that neutral. I use a plugin called Filmbox to make it look more analog. That's right. It was actually given to me by the nice maker of the plugin. So here's a little shout out. Filmbox is a nice plug. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. We're not done yet because, of course, the background is black now. We don't want that. So in order to make a nice and colorful background, I go to Effects, Generators, Solid Color. Actually, you can also do, uh, well, you can place anything in the background, of course. But for now, I'll go for a solid color. And uh, it happens to be black. So let's change that to, what shall we do? Let, let's make it blue again. Something like that, all right. But now there's one uh, very tricky problem. The transparency is rendered incorrectly and that's something I discovered really late actually. You see, everything has a black edge and that shouldn't happen. Now, if you look that up, what you usually get is go to the clip attributes and then uh, change the alpha mode, but that, that, that totally doesn't work. So what you should instead do, right click and then click open in fusion page. Now we're in the fusion page. And now you just do what I say, shift space bar, mete, If you type that, it automatic automatically selects matte control, so you can press enter. And then you can just change the gamma here to your liking. You see, this is too much. This is also wrong. It seems that uh, 0.5 gives a very nice result. 
You see, now all the black is gone and we have proper transparency. So that's how I solved that problem. And now we can enjoy our lovely animation. There's just one tiny problem with this and that is that I can totally not play this back with the grading and the 60 frames per second and uh, the big files. I, <laughs> even if I disable the grading here, I can still not play it back at real time. So that was kind of a pain in the bleep to edit. This is an experimental shot. It goes from light to dark and it's actually one single scan. First I captured the light part, then turned off the lights, changed the exposure and captured the dark part and imported all that and it worked. In this scan I left the CD door open on the right side of the scan, let's call it a scan, and that also worked to my surprise. I was also curious what would happen if I used high 8 footage to make a Gaussian splat. This is the creepy result. <laughs> Didn't really work. The camera also has auto exposure that I couldn't turn off, but it still managed to make something of it. And these crazy shots are from a splat that went wrong. Some settings didn't match and it created splats all over the place, except where we shoot. Giving another unexpected nice uh, graphical design thing that I used at the end of the video. And there's of course quite a lot of shots that I didn't use. This is one of them. I thought the light was too ugly and also you couldn't really see the second speaker, which was quite a Gaussian split challenge to begin with. And with that I say thank you for watching this lazy posy video on the lazy posy channel and I hope to see you soon. Not many seconds.